It just unpacks it even further. The Living Bible says this. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. Do you see how vital this series is? It's the principal thing. It's the most important thing we need to do is get wisdom. Somebody say, I need some wisdom. We need to wise up. So wisdom is the critical thing. It's the important thing. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen, when I speak of wisdom, there's a difference between wisdom and intelligence. Y'all got to feel me. There's a difference between wisdom and intelligence. Because there are some people that are gifted with intelligence. They are just naturally smart. But how many know you can have an IQ or high IQ, but possess a low WQ? Well, okay, IQ, intellectual quotient, right? But you have a low wisdom quotient. That means you have all the intelligence in the world. You can, you can break down equations and you can do all this type of stuff, but you don't know how to keep hold to some money. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. You smart. I mean, you smart. You know how to, all the scientific things you can put down, break down, chemistry, all that. But when it comes to staying married, you don't know how to do that. So you got intelligence, but you don't have wisdom. And what the Bible wants us all to understand is that we need wisdom. We need wisdom. Because we don't want to just be, we don't be smart and dumb at the same time. Did y'all hear what I just said? You're smart, but you're dumb at the same time. So we need wisdom. So let me really break down what this word, I'm going to define wisdom. Let's define it. If we don't need it, we need to find it. What is it? Let's define it. According to, according to Webster Dictionary, it's the ability to discern inner qualities and relationships accumulated physiological or scientific learning. Watch this. Watch this. This is, this is powerful. The natural ability to understand things that most other people cannot understand. That's the end of wisdom right there. It's the ability to discern. Inequalities. Look at that. Look at that. The natural ability to understand things that most other people cannot understand. That's wisdom according to Webster's Dictionary. And I appreciate that. However, what we see listed in the dictionary is human wisdom. <coughs> That's human or worldly wisdom. What I want to inculcate you with for the next couple of weeks is not human wisdom. It's God's wisdom. I want to inculcate you with godly wisdom. Somebody say godly wisdom. God. Earthly wisdom, here it is Tony, earthly wisdom is based on facts. Godly wisdom is based on truth. Oh, Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Earthly wisdom is based on facts. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Facts are subject to change. Truth can't. Whatever is truth now is going to be truth tomorrow. Facts can change. Facts can change. The moment you walk out a door, a fact can change. So world wisdom is based on facts. Godly wisdom is based on truth. So we need the truth. We need God's wisdom. Somebody say, I want some God wisdom. Hmm. Watch this. Earthly wisdom is based on facts. And the earthly wisdom, y'all know what earthly wisdom is. A lot of us in this room today is governed. We govern our life based on earthly wisdom. Okay, y'all don't believe me. Earthly wisdom is this. Follow your heart. What should I do? Just follow your heart, baby. That's earthly wisdom. The Bible says the heart is nasty. Y'all yeah. <laughs> didn't hear what I just said. The world says follow your heart. God says your heart is nasty. It can't be trusted. That's right. That's right. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Because most of our hearts are made and built and shaped by our experiences. So if my experiences are jacked up, that means my heart is jacked up, which means it's going to lead me in the wrong way. So don't follow your heart. Watch this. You follow the spirit. Worldly wisdom is based on facts. Godly's, godly wisdom is based on truth. Hmm. Let me put it like this. 
Look, true wisdom comes straight from God. True wisdom comes straight from God. This is just my introduction. I ain't, I ain't getting nowhere yet. This is not the shouting. This is not the shouting sermon. Next week will be. I'm trying to get y'all something. Get y'all somewhere. Get something into you. So this is just the intro. We got to learn some things about wisdom, and wisdom comes straight from God. This is the significant thing about what I'm trying to say. And this is what I need you to get. I need you to get this. If you don't get nothing else for the rest of the series, this is what I want you to leave out today remembering. Y'all ready for this? I want you to remember this to the day you leave this planet because I think we forget this, okay? I think we forget what I'm about to put on the screen. I think we neglect to understand what I'm about to put and broadcast to you this morning. This is the thing you need to leave out today with. What is it? God is smarter than us. Y'all didn't hear what I just said? I know that's deep, but you got to feel it. God is smarter than you and I. The Bible, Bible talks about and describes God as omniscient. Yes. That means he's all-knowing. That's that word omni, omni, all. Sisciente, which means knowing, all-knowing, all-knowing. God possess all knowledge. He knows everything. He knows your ins and outs. The Bible talks about how God knows every hair on your head. You know the great ones and the ones that fall out. He knew exactly. He knew exactly where it fell out too. He said it fell off in the sink. He know where it is. He knows everything. There's nothing that escapes the knowledge that our God has. He is smarter than us. Let me put some Bible on it. Great and mighty is our Lord. His wisdom cannot be measured. Y'all didn't feel that. His wisdom cannot be measured. He knows better than us. He knows more than us. He knows what's right for us because he possesses all wisdom. Hmm. Our God is smarter than us. He has all wisdom, absolute knowledge. He has it. This is how great God is. God knows the outcome to every road that you decide to travel. He's not guessing. God knows if you take, you choose to go down road A, he knows exactly what's going to happen if you go down road A. He knows that if you choose to go down road C, he knows exactly what's going to happen if you go. He knows the outcome. He knows the beginning of the circumstance. He knows the end of the circumstance. He knows in the middle of the circumstance. God knows everything. We don't. Our, our, our wisdom, our knowledge is limited. Let me help y'all. Our knowledge is based on, this is why the Bible says this. Man looks at the outer. God looks at the inner. Because that means he knows the hearts of every individual. We judge people based on what we can see. So, so we believe just because they may act a certain way, we believe their heart is that way. So we judge people by their heart. And God says, you don't know everything. So we don't have a right to judge. Did you hear what I just said? That's why we don't have a right to judge. Because you don't know everything. You don't know what that sister been through. You don't know why she's wearing what she's wearing. You don't know why he's doing what he's doing. You don't have the right to judge because you don't possess all knowledge. That's why we need the judging up to him. We need the correction up to him. He has ultimate knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. All wisdom. Which means he's smarter. Y'all got to catch this. He's smarter than you. So whatever he lays in the word for us to do. Watch this. He's telling us because he's smarter than us. Everything he, he had put, he used men and women. to. He used these brothers to put forth the word of God in his book. So that we can receive wisdom because God is smarter than you and I. If he didn't have this word. Oh my goodness. If there was no word of God left for human beings to read, we would be some jacked up folk. We're already jacked up right now. Just imagine that there was no word to govern our lives. We'd really be messed up. But we thank God that he decided to use individuals to leave us words of wisdom. This is powerful, ladies and gentlemen. So this series, we will look at ways we can apply God's wisdom to basically every area of our life. Our spiritual life. How many of you know you have a spiritual life? 
Okay? How many of you, you got a, 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 a job life? You, 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 got, you got a job life, don't you? What about your family? That's, that's another part of life, right? right? Can I suggest to you, God wanted them all to be interconnected? That your spiritual, because what we do is we leave our spiritual life on Sunday. It's just for Sunday, that's it. I shout and dance only on Sunday when people can see. But I don't know how to praise when I'm in my closet by myself because nobody's watching. So I don't get a shout. I don't get a shonda. So you got to be able not only, ladies and gentlemen, to have your spiritual life, your relational life, should all go hand in hand. They should be tied together because we don't just serve a God of a Sunday. We serve a God Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We serve a God who cares about every relationship I'm in. He cares about my finances. He cares about my body. And if he cares about all those things, those things should be submitted to him. Yes. If he cares about all those things, those areas must be submitted to him. So these are the things we're going to discuss. Because Proverbs is is, is off the chain what God does in the book of Proverbs. He don't lay, he don't leave anything to ambiguity. He just tells us straightforward. That's why I like Proverbs because it's straightforward. Proverbs will say something like this. Lazy people are stupid. And you say, yeah, that's true. That's true. (laughs) That's sure enough true. It's just straight to the point. It's succinct. It's succinct. It's succinct. Straight to the point. It's not any wasted words. It comes straight to the point. So we're going to look at this Proverbs. So, so, So watch this, ladies and gentlemen. How do we get this wisdom? How do we, if this wisdom is a principal thing, if this godly wisdom is going to change my life, it's going to keep me on the straight and narrow. If this is very important, how do I get it? I'm so glad you asked. Two ways you can get wisdom. Two ways you can get wisdom. Number one, ask. That's so simple. Y'all want something deep? Did I have to walk around or swim in the lake of Minnetonka? What was it? That Prince store? <laughs> That's what y'all looking for. Some deep stuff. No. Ask. Somebody say ask. Ask. Put some Bible on it. If you need wisdom, ask your generous God. And he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking for wisdom. You have not because you ask not. Most of the stuff we live, most of the stuff we're lacking in our lives is because we haven't asked God for it. And we need to ask God for wisdom. If I want wisdom, I need to ask for it. Number two, and this is where we're going to park for the next couple of weeks. The next way you can get wisdom is through his word. Next way you can get wisdom is through God's word. If I want wisdom, I got to find it in God's word. Specifically, there's how many books of wisdom? Anybody know? Any biblical scholars in here? Theologians that know how many books of wisdom we have in the Bible? Yeah, we have what? Ecclesiastes. We have Proverbs. That was both of them written by Solomon. Song of Solomon, written by Solomon. Remember that? Job is considered a book of wisdom. Those are books of wisdom. Those are wise, but you leave those books. You read those books. You will come out better than you were before. You'll come out with the insight to godly living like you never had before. This, this series, though, we're going we're gonna to concentrate specifically on the book of Proverbs. We're going to break down Proverbs. I'm not going to go every, there's 31 chapters. I'm not going to go every book of, of I'm just going to show you the highlights, all right? Some of the good parts that he, he, he unpacks for us in the book of Proverbs that's going to give us wisdom, all right? Y'all ready? Let's go. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. Let's start with Proverbs chapter 1. All right? Somebody say, I need wisdom. I need need me some wisdom. I'm tired of doing dumb stuff. (laughs) I need some wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 1. Look what it says. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. These are the Proverbs of who? Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Before we move on, I got to break down the first thing I saw leap out the text, that word proverb. I can't automatically assume you know what proverb means. Proverb, that, that word proverb is defined as, watch this, it means Michelle. That's the word we got in Hebrew, which probably comes from a verb meaning to be like. To be compared with. A proverb then is a statement that makes a comparison or summarizes a common experience. It's a proverb. Don't you know that proverbs even exist outside the Bible? They're ancient pro- African proverbs. 
all based on humanistic thinking. All right? But when we talk about Proverbs based from a biblical context, we're talking about God's wisdom. All right? Not human wisdom, but God's wisdom. So Proverbs, watch this, are short sayings that express a general truth for practical godly living. So when I read Proverbs, this is what I want you to do. Because y'all can start reading it today, right? I see. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You're going to start reading it today. And when you read it, I want you to open up the book and just realize this. I'm going to get something, some short saying, that's going to change my life for godly living. That I may be able to live godly. All right? If I ever question how to live godly, Proverbs directs me on how to live my life in a godly manner. Proverbs give me the wisdom to be able to do that. So it's a proverb written by a brother named Solomon. Look at the text. Look at the text. It tells us who's written by. These are the Proverbs, the wise sayings of Solomon. Right? David's son. King of Israel. Watch this. These are Proverbs of Solomon. Anybody familiar with Solomon in the room? Anybody remember who Solomon is? All right. I got an uncle named Solomon. That's not him. I got an uncle named Solomon. That's who he was named after this Solomon. He ain't had his wisdom. Solomon. Solomon. Solomon in the Bible. David's son. David's son. And he wrote this. God used him to write wise sayings to you and I. God used him to bring forth these wise sayings to you and I. So the question becomes, how did Solomon get so wise? He's able to write 31 chapters in Proverbs. Then go on and write Ecclesiastes. Then go on and write the Song of Solomon. How did he get so much wisdom? Go to, watch this. Go to 2 Chronicles. Uh, chapter 1 verse 7. Look what this says here. How did Solomon get this wisdom? Second Chronicles chapter 1 verse 7. Look what it says. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said, What do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. God came to Solomon at night. While he's a young man, it says, Ask what you want. Watch this. And I will give it to you. So in other words, God gave him a blank piece of paper. And said, whatever you write down what you want, I'm going to give it to you. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Whatever. How many of y'all would lose your mind if you got a visitation from God Almighty tonight? And said, I want whatever you want. I'll give it to you. Whatever you need, I'll give it to you. If you ask for it, I'm going to give it to you. What would you do? And most of us in here, a Louis purse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. That man in the cubicle, cubicle, cubicle next door. I, <laughs> come on. Come on. A whole bunch of money. I need a whole bunch of money. Pastor, you know I need a whole bunch of money. Let me win the lotto. I want to win a lotto. I just want to win. That's all I want, Lord. That's all I want. So we got all these things that we'll list out to God. We list these things out to God. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, for most of the stuff that you ask for, there's nothing wrong with it. No, God don't care about that. But I like how Solomon responds to God's question. I like how Solomon responds to God's blank piece of paper. Look what it says. Look it, look it, look it, look it. He says, give me the wisdom and the knowledge to leave them properly for who could possibly govern this great y'all didn't get that Solomon says bump the house bump the car bump the money give me wisdom you know see see anybody can go out and get the money anybody can go out on themselves and get the car but I need something that can only come from you I need some wisdom I need some wisdom I need wisdom he didn't ask for no money. He didn't ask for car. He asked for wisdom. Hmm. What, what you gonna ask for when God give you the blank piece of paper? What you gonna write down? You gonna give a whole list of stuff that you didn't get in your childhood? Stuff that you're missing in your adulthood? Or would you do what Solomon did? And ask for wisdom. Okay, look what happened because he asked for wisdom. Look what it says. God said to Solomon, I, I could just imagine God. Oh my goodness. Because your greatest desire 
is to help your people and you did not ask for wealth, riches, fame, or even death of your enemies. Y'all didn't miss that because some of y'all would have wrote that down right there. The first thing that came on your list was, I need, I need, I need, I need hug on. If she was out the way, I'll be able to have that promotion on my job. If she was out the way, I'll be able to get that man that I want. I just need that stuff. Enemies, or watch this, or even long life. How many of y'all would have asked for long life? But rather, you ask for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. I love it. Because Solomon was king. A king always assumes responsibility for their people. This is my kingdom. Solomon said, this ain't mine. What, what I'm about to embark on does not belong to me. I just govern it. That's it. That's it. I'm just a, manage, a manager of what you own. So in other words, I need the supernatural ability to be able to take care of what you have given me. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me. How many of y'all asked God to help me take care of that marriage you gave me? Those finances, that new job. You got this brand new job God blessed you with, but you're spending your money on all kinds of stuff instead of saying, I'm giving it back to you. And I need wisdom to be able to handle what you brought me to. Wisdom. Properly govern my people. Watch this. I will certainly, because you didn't ask for all that, I will certainly give you wisdom, knowledge you requested. But as I said, because God, God can't stop. For some reason, nobody in here can outgive God. He don't know how to just shortchange you. I mean, if you ask for something, he always give you more than enough. Y'all didn't hear what I just said? You asking God and believing God for something, he goes above and beyond because that's what type of God he is. He's big. So a big God is always going to give me big stuff. So he asks for a small thing, which is in, for God, wisdom, that's a small thing. I can give that to you all day. But watch this. But I will also give you wealth. Riches and fame, such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. Watch this, y'all missed this. Solomon was paid, right? He still, to this day, is more paid than any other person ever walked this planet. The Bill Gates, the Donald Trumps, can have nothing compared to what Solomon had. The difference between Trump and the difference between Gates is they pursued wealth. Solomon pursued wisdom and got wealth. You hear what I just said? So in other words, watch what God said. God said, watch this. You come chasing after me and I'll go chasing after those other things for you. Y'all didn't hear what I just said? You go chasing directly after me. Let me be your focus. And guess what? I'm going to go running after those things. Okay, y'all know the scripture, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And live righteously. And guess what? I will give you everything you need. You don't have to go running after it. It's going to come running after you. Hmm. Solomon asks for wisdom. Solomon asks for wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, the day and age for us begging for things in our life, the new car, the new house is over. Ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. I tell people this all the time. I tell people this all the time. They got to catch this. A blessing received at the wrong time can be a curse. What wisdom do, wisdom gives me the ability to handle everything God has for me. So I need to ask for wisdom first so when the money come, I'm not going to go crazy with it. I need to ask God for wisdom first so when that husband or wife come, I know to handle marriage. So I need wisdom first. I need wisdom. Lord knows. Lord knows I needed wisdom with Lady Taria. I needed wisdom. There's some things that I didn't know about her, some things she went through in her past that I would have to deal with. So before I walked down that house, I said, Lord, give me wisdom so I can handle what you have blessed me with. Give me wisdom. And, 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 and God doubly blessed me because he not only blessed me with a wife, he blessed me with a daughter at the same time. Amen. So I had to learn how not only to be able to have the wisdom to handle my wife, but to handle my beautiful daughter at the same time. Amen. That take wisdom. Yes. 
wisdom before you embark on anything in this journey called life I need to ask wisdom before I start a new job I'm about to go in here Lord I'm about to, I'm about to go in here I don't want to I'm about to go in here so I need your wisdom now I, I need your wisdom Wisdom, wisdom. I need wisdom to be able to handle this job right now. I don't want to. I don't want to mess up things. I don't want to go. I want to go crazy on nobody. I just want to be able to handle what you have given me. Yes. You need God's wisdom. Seek the kingdom of God above all, yes. and His righteousness, and He will give you everything you need. I go after God, not the stuff. Yes. Yes. So Solomon who is the progenitor of the book of Proverbs. God dumped wisdom on him. He turns around and dumps wisdom back on us. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. And that's how God wants us to live. When every blessing we receive is not just for you. Yes. Okay. See, 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 watch this. God ain't going to bless you if he knew you are damned. Did y'all hear what it is? God is not going to bless you if he knows you are a dam. What is a dam? You block stuff. You block the flow of water. So you put a dam. And if he knew that the blessing will stop with you, I ain't bothering with that. Because the blessing was supposed to come through you. Y'all didn't hear what I just said? Everything God has for you is supposed to go straight through you. Amen. Amen. Through you. Everything he gives you. Every blessing that he pours on your life. Solomon was poured on with wisdom. Watch this. He could have sat on that. He rich now. Chris, he paid. Yes. The richest man to ever live. He could have just sat there in his castle and chilled. But instead, he put pen to paper. It yes. says, it's not enough that I got wisdom by myself. I want everybody around me to get the same wisdom that's on me. I wish I had five people to say, it's not enough that my marriage is blessed. I want everybody in my role to have a blessed marriage. It's not enough that I'm healthy. I want everybody in my role to experience health. It's not enough that I got joy. I want everybody in my sight to get joy. Don't let the blessing start with you. Be a conduit. Somebody say be a conduit. Let it flow through you. Let it flow through you. Let everything that God has for you flow through you. So Solomon lets his wisdom flow through him. And he wrote down some powerful truths in Proverbs that's going to cause us, you and I, to wise up. It's going to cause you and I to wise up. This stuff, these principles, these pregnant principles that he lays out in Proverbs is going to cause us to be pregnant with wisdom. Hmm. So, so he goes on after we find out who wrote Proverbs. Look what he says. He gives us a description of what Proverbs will do for you. Proverbs will teach you wisdom and self-control. See, this is crazy because some of us are asking for the very thing that Solomon says Proverbs will provide. Lord, give me, Lord, give me self-control. I'm tired of just falling victim to all this stuff every single day. I'm just losing myself. And God said, I put it, I had Solomon write it down for you. It's in Proverbs. It's all there. It's all there. Proverbs will teach you wisdom and self-control and how to understand sayings with deep meanings. You will learn what is right and honest and fair. From these, an ordinary person can learn to be smart. Y'all didn't hear what the text is saying? An ordinary person can go from, watch this, being ordinary to being smart. And here's, here, here it is. Right? And young people. Y'all, 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 let me pause and parenthetically digress right here. Somebody say young people. Because for the most part, let me see this Bible for a second. When our youth look at this book, they look at this as something for old folk. So watch this. That's why most of them don't come around until they're wearing Stacey Adams and sitting in the front row going to sleep. Because they think this book is for the old. But look at the text. 
text, it says, and young people. Somebody say young people. Lord, I wish I would have got this when I was younger. I'm just thinking back. I'm just thinking back to all the mistakes I made. All the stuff that I should have went to and things I should have went and done in my life. The reason why I didn't do it because I didn't have wisdom. And the Bible says young. Young people. Somebody say young people. people. Why did he say young people? Because adults, how many of we got problems? How many of you know we go through some issues? How many of you know the child you're raising also go through trials? They all through go through issues. God, watch this. The devil don't wait till they 45. The devil don't wait till they're 45 to attack them. As soon as they come out the womb, he's setting an onslaught attack to come against our babies. So we got to, ladies and gentlemen, I know you like reading those nursery rhymes, but we need to pull out Proverbs and start reading Proverbs to our children. We need to start reading wisdom, pouring in wisdom. Before you go to bed, baby, let's, let's read Proverbs chapter 2. Because you ain't going to be in debt like me. You ain't going to co-sign. That's what Proverbs talked about, the dangers of co-sign. You ain't going to co-sign like me. You're going to learn some things before you go through some things. Somebody say, young people. This book is not just for old. It's for the young. It's for all people. For all people. Somebody say, wise up. Wise up. So he goes on to say, I got to move, I got to move, I'm running out of time. He says, for young people, it's for young people, this is for young people, for old people, people of all ages, of all maturities. Watch this, watch this. He says, next text, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools. Don't you call nobody a fool, Pastor. No, the Bible says they're fools. He called them fools. Anybody that despises godly wisdom and instruction is a fool. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Solomon poured out what God has given him. He says, fool, despise. I love it because the text gives us the origin to wisdom and knowledge. It gives us the origin of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. What is it, ladies and gentlemen? It's laid out in the text. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Psalms said it like this. Psalms 111 verse 10. Psalms 111 verse 10. Read it when you get home. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But this text says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What is, what's the difference? There's a difference, ladies and gentlemen. Wisdom is the accumulation, accumulation of the God ideas, thoughts, suggestions. Knowledge is the ability to walk in it. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. So not only I'm, see, see, if you just have wisdom without knowledge, that means I'm storing up this information, but I'm not operating in it. Knowledge is operating in what I know. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Not only is it the beginning of learning things, but applying things. I feel you. I feel you. Because most of y'all saying, well, what do you mean by fear? And I'm not talking about the fear that you have for Chucky and Jason and Freddie. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that type of fear. When it says fear in the Bible about God, and it says many times to fear the Lord, it means reverence. It means reverence. It means awe. You in awe of him. You reverence him. Watch this. You are in submission to him. You submit your will, your way, your ideas to his. When you do that, you are now stepped into wisdom. When you can bow down to God, when you can bow down and say, you know what? This is what my flesh want to do. 
Watch this. This is what my flesh been wanting to do this for a while. She deser he deserved to get an uppercut, right? He deserved to get slapped. He deserved to get hit. That's what my flesh want to do. But, but I'm going to submit and I'm going to do what God say, which is love those who come against you. So right now, I just submit it. That's the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of knowledge. Yes. When I fear the Lord, when I reverence him, I put him above everything else. Yes. Somebody turn to your name and say, put him above everything else. Put him above everything else. Him above everything else. Reverence God yes. and wisdom going to show up. Wisdom is going to start knocking at your door when you submit. Okay, wisdom. Well, Pastor, wisdom, you haven't submitted. All right. I've been a Christian for a long time. I just can't be wise. I'm doing dumb stuff because you have not submitted. Wisdom is like Jesus. He knocks at the door. Did y'all hear what I just said? Wisdom is like Jesus. Matter of fact, Paul talks about Christ is the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. So just like Christ knocks at the door and says, I want to come in, wisdom is going to knock in. Knock at your door. The only way you open that door is to reverence God. So Solomon gives us that point. If I want wisdom, if I want knowledge, if I want understanding, I got to fear God. Then it dropped down to verse 20. This is where I lost it. I almost ran out my house with my stillest slippers on when I started reading what he said in verse 20. This is some powerful stuff. Look what he says. Wisdom shouts in the streets wherever crowds gather. Y'all didn't hear it. Y'all didn't hear it. Wisdom shouts in the streets. What does that mean? What do you mean? Wisdom is not hiding, y'all. Wisdom is making herself, I got to say it because that's what Solomon described her as a woman. Now, why would Solomon describe wisdom as a woman? Because every time you connect with a woman intimately, you should produce something. Y'all didn't hear what I just said? Y'all didn't hear what I just said? That's why they use women. Women give birth to stuff. When you hook up intimately with wisdom, you should be giving birth to stuff. There should be some stuff coming out of you because you have connected with wisdom. So he calls women, wisdom a woman. So all that stuff that he say, I don't like reading that Bible because it dog women out. No, it gave y'all a title of wisdom. When you were the right woman, you got wisdom. And we're going to get to that in Proverbs because I have a sermon coming up called Wise Women. Amen. Proverbs 31 talked about a wise woman. Amen. Then I got another sermon coming up in Proverbs talking about wise guys. Amen. So all that is laid out in the text. But he calls women, calls wisdom a woman. And he says, she shouts in the middle of the street. She's screaming. Ladies and gentlemen, wisdom is screaming for you. Ever since you was one years old, wisdom been shouting in, in your street. Wisdom is shouting in your life. Wisdom, wisdom could have kept you from doing that stuff you did. And I, I, I put it on the screen because if I could put it on the screen, most of y'all was tiptoe out of this room if y'all could show what y'all did in your previous life. <laughs> In your BC, what you did in your BC, your before Christ. Everybody in here got a BC. Everybody in here got a BC. And in that time, wisdom was shouting. But the voice of wisdom was being drowned out by peer pressure. Oh, yes. Wanting to be to fit in with my friends. My friends are more important than wisdom right now. Cause you know I gotta be, I gotta be, I gotta be dripping. I gotta be dripping right now. That's what it, I be dripping, right? You gotta be drip, dripping. Yeah, I gotta be dripping right now. So that's more important than what God said. You know I'm gonna make that more important. All of us done it. All of us have done it. We have made what people say, what television promote, what the music is pushing more important. So watch this. Those things in our life are louder yes. than the voice of God. And even though wisdom is screaming, you can't hear it because you have not turned down the volume of everything else. Yes. Wisdom shouts to the streets wherever crowds gather. Now watch this. Watch this. Y'all gotta hear this. You completely ignored me and refused to listen. You rejected my advice and paid no attention when I warned you. Y'all didn't, I know. 
uh, as I'm reading the text, my mind is going back to this very thing. I'm looking at all the things in my life that I neglected to adopt wisdom and I saw all the choices I made because I rejected to hear the voice of wisdom. Watch this. You rejected my advice and pay no attention when I warned you. So when you are stuck by some terrible disaster or when trouble and distress surround you like a whirlwind, wisdom gonna laugh and make fun. Oh my goodness. I, whoo, look what the text. Because you chose not to adhere to wisdom. Wisdom gonna sit back and allow you to go through what you desired to go through. What you decided to go through. It wasn't God. It was your choice. And wisdom gonna sit back and say, look at that, look at that cat right there. <laughs> look, at, look, at that. look at this dude right here. Look at this dude. He's a foolish fool. <laughs> I will laugh and make fun. Watch this. You will ask for help, but I won't listen. My goodness. See, this is why I'm trying to help you. Have you ever wondered why people could get in something and get stuck in it? Because they have ignored wisdom, and when you ignore wisdom, wisdom ain't gonna help. You will get stuck. You will search, but you won't find me. No, you will not learn, and you refuse. Let me say this real quick. This is not God talking. God gonna love us through. He gonna love us through. He gonna be there to hold our hand. He's talking about wisdom. Wisdom ain't gonna be there. But God will. God gonna love us through it all. But wisdom is gonna say, no, if they don't want me, I don't want nothing to do with them. But watch this. Because, no, you would not learn and you refused to respect the Lord. You re Remember what I told you? What's the beginning of wisdom? Fear of the Lord, reverence, respecting God in all of them. Because you chose not to respect the Lord. I'm opening this up to you. You rejected my advice and paid no attention when I warned you. Now you will eat the fruit of what you have done. Until you are stuffed. Yeah, this is so good. Proverbs, I love it. Until you are stuffed full on your own schemes. I love it. <laughs> Now you will eat the fruit of what you have done. In other words, now you have to deal with the consequences. See, you get to choose the choice. You don't get to choose the consequences. Oh, you don't. You get to choose what you want to do. You don't get to choose the circumstances. What are you trying to say? What is Proverbs? What is this all trying to say? It's trying to say something I've been saying to you for years. What you don't learn from revelation, you will learn through tribulation. What you don't learn from God's revealing things to you, you're going to have to go through it. Y'all didn't hear what I just said? Well, you don't hear. See, see, let me get that Bible again. So, this is called revelation. So, there's some things that he outlines for us right there in the text. Right? That's called revelation. I should learn from that. Everything I read, I should say, oh, that's why he did it. Because if you look at this book as a book of restriction, you'll never do it. It's a book of protection. Amen. This is not a book of restriction. This is a book of protection. Wherever God says not to do something, he's protecting us from something. Yeah. <laughs> What I just said. Oh, he's trying to ruin my fun. That's it. Don't he know I just, I'm 21. I need to turn up. <laughs> Come on now. You're messing my fun up. <laughs> no. No. God is not trying to mess up your turn up season. He's not trying to mess up your turn up season. No. He's protecting you on what that season may bring into your life. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Revelation. That's what God wants. God wants revelation. God wants us to learn through revelation. God's best is revelation. Well, well, pastor, experience is the best teacher. No, it's the hardest teacher. It's not the best teacher. The best teacher is revelation. Okay, y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. Okay. All right. Um, a little baby 
comes in, and we all had to do this. You cooking some spaghetti on the stove. You tell that little baby, hot. Mm. It's hot. And the baby looking like, hmm. Now, the baby, because the baby desires to experience something. Mm. Watch this. Watch this. Then the baby touches the pot. And burn is like, ah! screaming around mama gotta get all this stuff daddy gotta do this kiss the boo-boo all that stuff everything gotta be done and the baby's like, watch this baby burn the finger burn the finger they in pain they got it wrapped up their cousin come by look at the pie and they go towards the pie the one with the burned finger going Now, experience taught the child, but wouldn't it be better just to learn from what mama said? That ain't hot. Now, I wouldn't have a burnt finger. See, most of us is that little baby, we want to touch the pot. We want to touch the pot. I know what God says is hot. I know doing that is going to make me hot. I know God going to take, I know this is going to be hot, but let me touch it anyway. See, you standing in the way. I got to experience some stuff. Can I say this? this going, I'm going to drop a bomb on you. You will always survive learning through revelation. But I cannot guarantee you will survive learning through tribulation. Y'all didn't hear what I just said? You will always come out on top learning from revelation. But I cannot guarantee. Because some of you say, well, my daddy did it. He came out fine. I can't guarantee you that you're going to do the same thing that daddy did. And you're going to end up the same way. Well, my daddy was on crack. So if I just get on crack. No, I can't guarantee you that you're going to get on crack like your daddy and you're going to live. You will always come out good in Revelation. I cannot guarantee it's going to be all right in Tribulation. So if you want to go down that road, that's on you. But I can't guarantee it's going to be all right. So what you don't learn from Tribulation, what you don't learn from Revelation, you'll learn from Tribulation. Hmm. This is good, ladies and gentlemen. This is good. Watch this. Watch this. But whoever listens to me, my goodness, Whoever listens to wisdom will live without worry and will be free from the dread. Y'all didn't hear what the text is saying? You want to live a life worry-free? Listen to wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope. Y'all didn't get it. Y'all didn't get it. You want to live a life when you're above and not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. Yes. You have to be attentive to God's word to acquire wisdom. When I start having wisdom, I stop worrying. Amen. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all not feeling me. I just put up a text that's an answer to your prayers. I just put up a text that's an answer to your prayers because most of y'all pray, Lord, I don't want to worry no more. Yeah. Yes, you did. You did that last night. I saw you. <laughs> I don't want to worry. I'm tired of worrying about my bills. I'm tired of worrying about my children. I'm tired of worrying about this and that. The key to not worrying about this and that is to listen to wisdom. Hmm. Because wisdom tells me, guess what? Everything is going to work together for my good. Wisdom says it's going to turn around for my favor. Wisdom says by his stripes I'm healed. That's what wisdom tells you and I. And when I adopt to that wisdom, I live a life worry-free and dread free of disaster so watch this ladies and gentlemen I got to the point that if something drops in my life unexpectedly there's some things dropped in my life the past two weeks unexpected I didn't see it coming I really didn't I was blindsided by it I was like Woo, what the heck was that but I, for some reason and I know what the reason is I know I'm going to end up on top I know, I just know, I just know that I'm going to end up, in, I'm operating in God's wisdom. I know I'm going to end up on top no matter what comes my way. I'm not dreading disaster. I'm not worried about it. If it happens this way, 
so be it. If it happens that way, so be it. Because I trust God. I trust his wisdom. You got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, the difference between the average person that may fall down, when, they, when a sinner falls down, they bust their head wide open. When a saint falls down, it's a trampoline at the bottom. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. When a, when a saint falls, there's a trampoline at the bottom. That means every time I fall, I have the, I have the possibility. I have the, the power to bounce right back up. Amen. It's all predicated on wisdom. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, just based on Proverbs chapter 1 alone, do you see how wisdom is vital? Yes. I just read Proverbs chapter 1. I didn't even get to Proverbs 2 and 3 yet. And we're going to get there. But Proverbs chapter 1 is pregnant yes. with principles that will change our life. If you're excited about this series, give God some praise. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Wisdom is the critical thing. It's the important thing. Father, we bless you. And I speak on the behalf of every person seated in this room today. I ask for your wisdom. Wisdom to manage my finances. Wisdom to take care of my wife and my husband. Wisdom to parent my children. Wisdom to live a godly life. I need your wisdom. We need it. Every day of our life. We're going to start out our day asking for your wisdom. And Father, as you take us through the Proverbs in the midst of this series, I pray that every Proverbs brings forth revelation. That every proverb that we read will speak to our very hearts. That every proverb that we read will change and transform our thoughts, our ideas. Thank you for it, Father. Father, we fear you. We enter in this series in awe and reverence of you. And because we have entered in this series with awe and reverence, we know that's the beginning of wisdom, of knowledge, and of understanding. So, Father, we are ready. We are open vessels for you to pour your wisdom on us so that everybody at the sound of my voice can wise up. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise.